What we're going to be looking at here is calculating the effective interest rate here using a financial calculator and amortizing any discount or premium here on some debt that we're going to be issuing. And we could look at it in terms of a notes payable. It could also be a bonds payable or a loan here. So let's look at what we're talking about when we're setting up this uh, effective interest uh, amortizing here of some debt. So we're going to first be looking at where debt's issued here at a premium. And this is the case here where let's go down and look at what we're given here. We're going to have received that present value of a loan or notes payable we're going to take out here is $12,000. And then four years later, we're going to have to pay back $10,000 here. Received $12,000 here, the present value, and then the future value here is $10,000. And the other thing that we're given here on this uh, note here is the fact that it has a 8% stated rate of interest on it here. So that's what has to be paid yearly on this note here. So a uh, $10,000 note here at 8% gives us an annual interest payment here of $800. So over four years, we're going to pay out a total here of cash payments of $3,200. Now, this is where we have to come in and we have to calculate an effective interest rate to amortize this note down here, let's say from the $12,000 to the uh, what we're, uh, that present value of $12,000 down to $10,000, a future value. So this is where our fin financial calculator comes in. So let's look at our calculator input here. So uh, N, uh, we put in here for four years here. That's the length of this our term of this note here that's payable here. Let's look at it as terms of a note's payable. And what we have to calculate is this effective interest rate here per year. And we're looking at it on a yearly basis here. So the other thing we know is the present value here. That's $12,000 here. Enter that in here. The payment amount, that was our $800 here. And then the future value is uh, $10,000 here. Now you can see this was a positive amount of present value here and make sure you enter these. You can enter it in a, here. Make sure your payment here is a minus amount here of 800 and your future value here is a minus amount of $10,000. You could have had these signs reversed here where the, your present value could have been negative but your payment and your future value would have to be plus when you're putting them in here. So you enter that in here and then you're going to uh, come up with an effective, it's going to calculate an effective interest rate here for you of 2 point six six two eight percent so effectively that's what we're going to be paying here in interest on this on let's just say on this note here so to amortize it here to calculate our amortization amount simply take your beginning balance here your present value of twelve thousand times this effective interest rate here of two point six six two eight percent and you're going to come up with three hundred and twenty dollars interest expense here on an effective basis here for the first year. Now our cash payment here was for $800, but we're actually uh, have to effectively are, uh, have to pay 320 here. So the difference between 800 and the 320 here is the amount that we're going to amortize on this. Let's just say on this notes payable here, $480. So what we do here is we would just take the 12000 here less the $480 amortized amount and we're going to come up with the new carrying value here on this note for the next year here of 11520 So what we would do for our interest expense for the next period just simply take your effective interest rate here times the new carrying amount here and you're going to come up with your interest expense here. Subtract that or compare that to your cash payment that you're making here. Uh, $800 cash payment effective interest rate here of 307 so the amount that we're going to amortize here is $493 and that we'd be subtracting here from a beginning balance to come up with the new balance here so what we've done here is we've we're going to have amortized this from its present value here of 12,000 down to $10,000 and our amortization amount you can see we've amortized it for a total here of $2,000 simply the difference here between the present value here and the future value and then our effective interest expenses look noted here at $1,200 so that's what effectively we're paying here on this loan or this note here okay so what we want to take away from this here is just use that use your calculator here with the inputs that you have here to determine your effective interest rate. Okay, so now let's go and look at how uh, we'd record this here on our balance sheet just for our example. Oh, before we do that here, uh, make sure you get your payments here and your effective interest rate all based on the same period. So if you were making payments here, say on a 
semi-annually or quarterly, you'd have to have those calculated here and you'd have to know what the stated rate of interest is. In case of it semi-annually, you take 8% here divided by 2, you come up with 4%. And then you'd have to have the same thing. You'd have to, all these numbers here have to match for those the particular period that you're looking at. We looked at it for a year here, but if it was semi-annually, then you'd have to, um, you'd have extra payments here, and then you'd have a different effective interest rate here. Actually, uh, divide the, the amount that you have here on a yearly basis, say if a semi-annually by two here, and then you'd come up with the effective interest rate here, but you'd have you have to make sure you get your payments here and your interest rates and everything matched up here. Okay, so let's go and look at how we record this here. Just so you get an under. Okay, so this is what we're sitting at here, and then of course this is at a premium here, and how it affects our interest expense, where we receive twelve thousand here, and we're going to pay back ten thousand here at the end of year four. So what we've just done here is we would set up a liability on our balance sheet. Let's just say a bonds or notes payable here. Credit that here for ten thousand dollars on our balance sheet as a liability, and then we have. Uh, we received here, let's just go over to our asset side here on our balance sheet, uh, we would have received $12,000 here in cash. So what we need is a balancing entry here and it would be a, on our, again on our liability as a premium here on our balance sheet that works in conjunction with our bonds payable. We credit that here for $2,000. So we got 10,000 credit here, 2,000 credit here, and then our cash amount was the 12,000 that we received here. Everything uh, debit amount here. So credits, balance with our debits here. But we have to do is we, we had to amortize this premium down here and that we did with our uh, effective am, uh, Im interest method here. So that's coming right off our amortization schedule that we determined here. And what we would do, okay, for each period we've amortized it down here. So we would credit or reduce our premium here uh, from $2,000, amortize it down here to zero at the end of the fourth year. So this represents for each year here the amortized amount of that premium. Okay, so now what we would do with our premium account here, we would, we need a, we got a debit amount here, so we're going to have to have a credit here to our interest expense on our income statement. So this would be that amortized premium here. Just move your debits amount over to your credits here and this is the interest expense. But you see what's happening here. You're reducing your interest expense here through this premium amortization. Okay, so let's look at it. So let's first look at this interest expense here based on that cash stated rate of interest. So what we would have paid here on a stated rate of interest uh, based on that, what our note was saying here was we'd credit or reduce our cash account here by that $800 uh, interest payment each period here for each year here. And then the debit amount would go to our interest expense. So this actually uh, would be our interest expense based on that cash payment, $800 here. So what we have a total cash uh, payments here of $3,200, but our interest expense, because the bond here was issued at a premium, uh, or the note was issued at a premium, or our loan here was issued at a premium, we would have uh, reduced our interest expense by that amortized amount each month. So looking at our uh, true interest expense here, um, the effective interest expense was that $3,200 cash payment less the amortized amount here of $2,000 give us an effect. Uh, net interest expense here of $1,200. You can see it here with your debits here and your credits here. Okay, now let's go down and look at the other case here where we're going to have debt issued at a discount. And this is just going through our mechanics here so you can get some, uh, understand what's going on here and so you can determine the effective interest rate here again using this calculator. So we're going to have the same situation here but what we know in this case here is we're going to have received in this case let's look at it the de debt is issued at a discount that would be and we're going to be using again the effective interest rate method here. So the same thing as we've done up above here but in this case we're going to have received $8,000 here that would be the present value of that let's just say a note or a loan here and we're going to have to pay back $10,000 here in the future. Same thing, four years uh, in the future, or we're going to have to pay $10,000. Same as example as that we had above here, only that uh, present value here in this case is $8,000. Again, the future value is the same here at $10,000. And then the other thing 
the stated rate of interest the same as we had up above here, that 8% here at $10,000 uh, $10, note or loan that we took out here. So for our effective interest rate here, okay, again, N here is four, four years, present value, that was the 8,000 here, and the payments, again, were an $800 payment here per year here, and then the future value here is $10,000. Putting that in your computer, you're going to come up with, an, or into your calculator here, you're going to come up with an effective interest rate here of 15.0062%. Okay, so our amortization here is the same as we've done before. In this case, we're going to start out with the $8,000 here as our beginning balance. Take it down as our effective interest rate here, 15.0062%, and you're going to come up with an interest effective interest expense here of $1,200. Compare that to the payment here of $800 and the difference here gives the amount that you're going to amortize here on this note or this loan here and that's $400. So what we would do is we take that amortized amount here $400, add it to the beginning balance $8,000, we're going to come up with $8,400. And just repeating that going through again here just so you can become familiar with it here. $8,400 times the effective interest rate here of 15.662% gives you your next year's in effective interest here of 1261 subtract that or compare it to your pay cash payment amount here and that's going to be the amortized amount here that you're going to be in this case subtract or adding to your um, be beginning balance here of 8400 to come up with your new balance so what we've done here is we're going to amortize this from eight thousand dollars here up to ten thousand dollars again using this effective interest rate method and that was based on um, our effective interest rate here 15.0062 percent. So you can see here in this case you can see our interest expense here is increasing each period here because the balance here is also increasing based on our amortization schedule here. So effectively our interest expense here total amount is going to be fifty two hundred dollars payment here uh, that we're cash payment we're making a 3200 so again the amortized amount here is two thousand dollars again that's because uh, we've gone here from eight thousand uh, uh, the present value here up to the future value here of ten thousand dollars okay so let's just go and look at how we'd record that here so just to see how this interest works here so um, okay now we had the debt issued at a discount and how it affects our interest expense so we received eight thousand up front here and we're going to have to pay ten thousand back here at the end of the fourth year again we got our bonds or notes payable same amount here ten thousand dollars when we issued it here but we're only receiving cash here a debit amount here of eight thousand dollars so we have our liability here of credit of ten thousand dollars so what we need is a balancing amount here between uh, our cash here of eight thousand and our bonds our bond or note payable here a, a loan of ten thousand dollars and that is where we set up a discount a liability here again we had this a note here as a liability we have to set up a discount which is a contra account here that is note so we would debit that here for two thousand dollars and what i mean by a contra account here you can see reversing entries here for debits and credits. So we debit that here, increase it, our discount by $2,000. So our balance is we get a debit here to cash 8,000, debit to our discount here, uh, contra account of 2,000, and that balances with the credit here on our notes payable here at $10,000. So again, all we've done, all we're gonna do is amortize it coming off that amortization schedule. For each year here, we would reduce our discount by the amount that we're amortizing that we calculated on off our effect using our effective interest rate method here and then the, that would be reducing our discount until we get down to zero here in a discount at the end of the fourth year so credits here uh, to our discount then we need on our income statement an interest expense we need a debit here on our interest expense and you can see here this is actually increasing our interest expense in this case the debit here uh, so credits here then the amounts get debited over here based on that amortization. Now, let's just go up and look at the interest expense. Now, this is, again, the same as we had in our previous example here. That was that cash stated rate of interest of 8%. The cash payments here are $800 that we're making each year here. But on top of that, we've got the interest expense for the amount that was amortized discount. So in this case, we're going to have an in, we're going to be looking at a greater overall interest expense or effective interest expense. And that's simply the 30 
$8,200 cash payments plus the in this case we're adding that amortized amount here at 2000 so our total interest or effective interest rate here is $5,200 so in this case we're actually having an increase here in our interest expense only because we received the $8,000 uh, is at a discount here and we're going to pay back ten thousand dollars here in the future okay so all I want to do is and we can go back here one more time and just look at this and we'll just look at it with our calculator here remember when you're working with these discounts or premiums on these loans here these are the things you have to know here you have to know what your present value is here you have to know what the future value is and this is really a cash flow situation here and then you also have to know in case if there's any interest payments on, on in this case on this note here and based on that and that you have to know the term of the loan here based on those numbers you just put them into your calculator here as we've done here and you're going to come up with that effective interest rate that you have to amortize here and then you just set up this amortization schedule and remember uh, the amortized amount is simply the difference between your effective interest here that you're paying for each um, that you're calculating for each period here and the actual in this case the actual cash payment you're making so that's the am amount that you amortize and either you're amortizing up or down some value either you have a, a, a greater present value here and a lesser future value here or the vice versa what we're showing here we're going to have a reduced present value here and we have to amortize it up here to a greater future value so this is just to give you some practice here just remember use a calculator and then go through this effective interest rate method here for amortizing any note or loan or bond or whatever you're doing